Welcome everybody. It's day three of Graph Expo, Girls Who Print Day. Our first official panel of Tuesday, September 14th, 15th. Yeah, uh, it's been a long one. Um, today's topic is, uh, this panel's topic is, I cannot believe it's not offset. Everything you need to know about the inkjet revolution. And I am thrilled to welcome HP PageWide, WordPress. WordPress technology. Technology? Okay. Um, Xerox uh, and Canon Solutions America to the panel here today to discuss this. We're going to start off very simply with who you are and what you do at your companies, and then we'll get into the meat of the conversation. Mr. Murphy. Hi, everybody. I'm David Murphy, and I'm the Worldwide Director of Marketing and Business Development for HP PageWide WordPress. So we help to create awareness, preference, and demand for for our WordPress technology, and then we enable our customer success after installation. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Guy Broadhurst, Vice President of Technology and Client Solutions for Canon Solutions America. And I'm Dustin Groutman. I am Vice President and General Manager of the Continuous Feed Inkjet business for Xerox, responsible for the portfolio of products on a worldwide basis. And Dustin, why don't we start with you? What is your company's position on the value proposition of Inkjet, and who are the ideal customers for your presses? So our, our position on the, the value proposition of Inkjet is it's, um, it's a, a very interesting technology that's emerging and, and developing at a pretty rapid pace um, that provides a, a real alternative to other technologies which have also very compelling value propositions, specifically offset and, and toner-based digital, it's, uh, an area where we've had a, a long history. So Inkjet fits certainly right in between there, and um, in terms of the, the right customers for our technology, um, I, I think it's probably a similar answer for most of us. It's, it's the right customers that for, for inkjet technologies in general. Um, and and I, what I say is, is that uh, what defines those customers is they have enabling applications to make the investment in inkjet. It's a significant investment for most, and um, to have those enabling applications to, to begin that journey, which we, we feel is still very much in its infancy, um, that technology will evolve over a long time. You have to have a starting point, and uh, so that, that's the ones that we look to customers to have those applications that can enable the investment initially. Guy? Thank you. Uh, I think the value proposition along the same line as Dustin is all about the application. After all, the application really decides on what kind of inkjet solution does the customer need and why do they need it. A lot of the times we find behind the scenes there are reasons to move to inkjet, whether it be a specific problem with paper, a specific problem with uh, time to market, or a specific problem with a um, particular group of colors. Wh whatever the reason is, there's, there's a drive from whether you're toner-based or you're not digital at all and you're on the offset environment, but there's always a reason to move to it. And when we find the underlying reason, we can identify a product and a solution that identifies that product really quickly and then move on to the uh, solution for the customer. Yeah, I agree. And what you have to have to really be, uh, I guess, an ideal prospective customer for our technology is a vision for the future of your business with an intent to transform the value for your clients. So our clients are transferring jobs from their offset presses, they're transferring jobs from their toner devices, but more importantly, our customers are creating new applications that weren't possible or weren't practical just a few years ago. And what they're looking for is technology that has unparalleled quality, productivity, versatility, and economics that uh, enable them to provide this kind of transformative value to their clients. And these typically be in, they can be in production mail, they're in commercial printing, they're in book printing, and more recently in corrugated packaging. So we're seeing this realm expand beyond the scope that we even envisioned just five years ago or two years ago, and we're seeing more conversations around anything's possible. Right, thank you so much. And I'll stay with you, David, if you don't mind. All right. 
Um, and um, I spoke to these gentlemen prior to asking this question just so that they know that, you know, anyone could go on Best Buy and click three products and comparison shop and try to understand what the difference is between each model. So we're going to get into this a little now, um, but this is not in any way to create a competition. This is uh, to inform the printers out there the differences so that then you can follow up on the websites with the salespeople and uh, even on social media with the technologies up here that are, are best for your business. So, Mr. Murphy. I know, I'm so formal, right? <laughs> um, what, make, what makes your inkjet offerings unique? You know, those four value pillars, those four value pillars I spoke of, of quality, productivity, versatility, and economics, are really driven through continued performance that comes from investment in vertical integration. So at HP, we design and develop our inks, the media configuration, the thermal inkjet head technology, and we've invested $1.4 billion to, to make sure that every element of the process is proceeding and is innovating at the right pace and in the right formula. And what that uh, allows our customers is to have the confidence of upgradability. So every time you'll hear HP representatives talk, we'll talk about upgradability, versatility, and configurability. So we have five web width platforms from 22 inches to 110 inches. And what we do is we work with you based on your applications and your environment and where you want to take your business. And then we protect your investment from day one throughout multiple generations, enabling you that, con that confidence of knowing your investment will be protected through upgradability. And you'll have that at the benefit of our advancements as they come to market. So we can talk about some of those advancements in, in a bit. Thank you. Guy? Thank you. You know, it's interesting to think about Best Buy selling our equipment. It would be kind of an interesting uh, concept, I think. But uh, we have, at the moment, we have 19 different models of, uh, of equipment, uh, ranging in speeds of 300 impressions a minute all the way up to 833 feet a minute in all different widths and sizes. And without question, our job as an organization is to identify the applications and the concerns that customers have in order to achieve their goals of being profitable and be able to get those applications out in a way that makes sense for their customers. customer. So when we think about all these different models that we have and we think about the sizes, the shapes, the pricing, and the long list of uh, feature sets that are on our equipment, we try and select the product that best suits that customer because in the end that's what this is about is really making sure that they can be successful. If they're not successful, we're not successful. And that's really of, of great concern um, for one product or the other. Certainly over the past few years, these products have really changed and they've really migrated and been upgradable in the field in, in a way that, again, makes sense as our technology changes and evolves, whether it's ink or the heads or some other piece that makes it a better product. In the end, our goal is simple the very highest quality to be as paper agnostic as possible and give the speeds and the price points the customers need to be successful. Thanks very much. Dustin? And so, so very similar story from Xerox, and, and I think that's an underlying um, uh, aspect of value of this technology is, is that inkjet technology is is very configurable. Um, you know, the head technology is the heart of the machine, and we have two different head technologies that we have platforms. So there's a proprietary Xerox solid inkjet, which uh, has has a value proposition to work with extremely um, extremely thin papers. It works with very lightweight papers, and because it doesn't introduce water into the equation, it has a different set of properties in terms of how it can perform in high area coverages. But we also have aqueous inkjet technologies in our portfolio products because that is uh, technology that has advanced tremendously, um, really uh, appears to be the, the one that is, is most accepted in the industry by a broad range of customers. But um, with the complexity of 
the machine configurations that both Xerox, HP, and, and Canon, as well as our competitors have, um, really for us it all starts with the application. So, um, you know, I think if you're talking about Best Buy and you're talking about search functions and, and looking at different criteria, that's what we try to extract out of customers to help them, help guide them towards what, which of our solutions makes the most sense. And I'll stick with you, Dustin. How are you helping customers achieve success with this new technology? And you, can you share a case study illustrating this partnership? Um, sure. So, so I think it's it's a for Xerox this is not something new or novel. Uh, it's a similar it's a similar story to what we experienced when uh, the production color market around iGen emerged. And and really that was for customers to be successful, we have to help them identify which parts of their business they're going to transform. That's but use that that um, term has been used before, and it, it's it's the same in inkjet. So which aspects of their business they're going to transform? Plan out that journey. Um, plan for the successful implementation and installation of the. Equipment. So that's that's identifying those enabling applications, proving them out in our factory environment before, and then replicating that in the customer environment so that they can start up and have success right out of the gate. And then beyond that, it's it's really working with them to optimize whether it's converting other other applications or working with them to promote and market and drive business that's new and, and incremental to their business as opposed to just substituting this technology for for another one that they might have in their facility at that point in time. Thank you, Guy. Thank you. I think there's a couple of different steps to assisting customers in being successful. The first one, without question, is understanding their applications thoroughly and making sure you select the right product for them and the kind of uh, solution that they need, for sure. But you have to guide them through the whole process. In the end, what we're all trying to do is the same thing. We want pages on those products, and we want them to get those pages out to their customers. Ultimately, that's what we're trying to do. We do this in a number of ways with business development projects with the customers. We do them in very early where we do a lot of early planning to ensure that the total cost of ownership or the TCO matches their scenario and they can, uh, they can get through this process successfully. And at the same time, we want to continue to migrate the applications onto the product to build that, that overall page count digitally on the product. If I think about a couple of good case studies, one is IWCO who over the years has brought multiple generations of our products and very specifically they've been able to move some of the work from their offset or some of the work from their older toner machines onto a number of our different platforms in different ways because they need different solutions for different parts of their business. Another great example is from Access Direct who had a lot of toner-based machines and has transferred a lot of that that output onto full color-based machines, moving the pre-printed forms from toner and offset printed onto their own uh, inkjet systems. And by the way, they had their own inkjet platform, uh, their own uh, uh, offset platform, and they actually closed that business down because of the success we had with ColorStream enabling them to get onto these pre-printed forms or get off the pre-printed forms. So there's a couple of success stories out there, many of them in many different shapes and sizes, but nevertheless, guiding them through that process is really a hand-holding process, which I think we all do very well. Uh, but it does take time to accomplish that task, and we're always there with them, guiding them through the different steps on the process. And I would just like to say that um, I had the privilege of attending your Think Conference uh, last week and uh, meeting your customers, and uh, they are doing some amazing things with your products and services and uh, the conference was amazing so if uh, you know you're a Canon Solutions America customer and um, you should get involved with that organization it was great thank you so the first important thing to recognize is that success starts when you begin the dialogue with your account manager and your solution architect and it progresses long after installation. So in other kinds of selling environments, not necessarily in the production inkjet space, there is a tendency of box selling. You sell a 60 month lease, you drop the box off, and then you come back to them in three and a half years later and talk to them about an upgrade path. That doesn't really work when you're buying multi-million dollar solutions, right? So you have customers that are investing in many cases for their livelihoods of their families and they need to ensure their success. So 
that relationship has to begin early and it has to be a multi-generational partnership. Partnership is sometimes misused or overused in our industry, but it couldn't be more appropriately used between a vendor and his customer in working through their challenges to overcome them and to develop new business opportunities. So what HP does is we help through a variety of areas. We help through business development resources. We have assigned and ad hoc resources who work with our account managers, the solution architects, the customers, and the customers' customers to identify ways to develop demand and generate incremental page volume for those customers. And that's something that doesn't happen in the first 90 days and stops. It has to go on because there's a progression in the need to grow. Now, the other elements of it are the user community where customers can learn from one another, such as what Guy mentioned with Think. You know, there's the, uh, the conference that HP customers created last year called Jetcom, and that was a, an environment based on user self-education, cross-sharing, and business development where customers are teaching customers. And that's a great way to learn about opportunities across segments, across geographies, and ways to make connections. So that's been a, a great uh, accelerator of success. And in terms of you know, case studies of how we've helped customers grow and transform, there are a variety of them. But I'll point to one that I just visited uh, last month, a, a customer called Anya Shapira. And this was a traditional transaction printing company that had done black and white statements and bills and invoices and had over time done imprinting with another provider's inkjet device on top of their offset shells. They got our device and did a white paper workflow where they created a full color, fully variable document and they became successful through our business development resources but they also now are planning to go into newer markets that they hadn't thought of before so beyond transaction to anything's possible and so we see more and more of that going on with our customers where they go and they start thinking about one application and then they say what else can we do together and I was actually going to give Jetcom a shout out because I've been lucky enough to have HP bring me to two of them, uh, both at a T Scoop uh, in the United States uh, this year and also in Ireland. And um, your customers are pretty out of control with those presses. They're, they're doing some crazy things. Um, so you know, you should definitely you know get in touch with all these gentlemen to find out um, what what everyone is actually doing with them, um, which a lot of times is more than you even think it can be done with them. And then and they're like, hey, I tried it and it worked. And now it's in your booths hanging on the wall. So it's very interesting. I mean, if I could stay with you, David. Um, um, how do your inkjet presses work in tandem with other, maybe your other technology or just other press technology out there? Sure. So it's a multi-technology world, right? So everyone has their own workflow. They've got offset presses. They've got toner. Uh, maybe they have other inkjet devices and what they need to have is that confidence and comfort of knowing that their workflow is going to be versatile and so what we work with our customers through our uh, SmartStream solutions program where we help them build a workflow based on the application but also configurable if they want to change applications, expand and grow and venture into new spaces. So for everywhere from pre-press to DFE to workflow paper handling and then to finishing what we do is we have a network an ecosystem of about 20 HP SmartStream solutions partners and we customize the workflow based on whether they have offset whether they have HP Indigo or some other toner uh, technology and it is really something that needs to be customized because it's going to grow and change as their business grows and changes over time and they can't be restricted into one box or one path. And I just, I just want to uh, specifically, are they creating books with the covers in some way? Sure. They, yeah. So if, can you give a few examples just to help spark some ideas out? There? Sure. So, you know, of course, a, a large majority of HP Inkjet WebPress customers or now HP PageWide WebPress customers have HP Indigo. So in the book printing market, um, oftentimes many of the uh, 
the color trade books or even the monochrome trade books that you uh, buy from your local store or online are often produced on HP Indigo and HP page wide web press uh, technologies in a hybrid workflow. So often our customers would use the Indigo for the cover and then the web press for the inside. But that can also be applied to a variety of other applications in direct mail where you have multi dimensional, multi sheet, and multi uh, substrate applications in that same package. So that's one of the areas that. Um, our customers benefit from is having the indigo technology to do seven colors and plastics and metallics and then having the inkjet technology for high volume efficiency and uh, and scalability. Thanks so much. Guy, same question? Yeah, sure. I mean, the fact is that many of our customers and our joint customers alike have multiple technologies and you think about the choices they have today. That's there's offset, there's cut sheet black and white, there's cut sheet color, there's continuous feed color, there's continuous feed black and white, and then there's high speed inkjet and now high speed uh, inkjet cut sheet as well. There's a myriad of equipment out there and been over a period of time these customers have evolved from one technology or another because that product suited that application. What we see now is a little bit of a different trend and you think about the evolution over the past 20 years with technology. A long time ago, it was pretty easy to say if you wanted to buy a cut sheet black and white printer, there's probably one vendor you wanted to go to. If you thought about color, uh, continuous feed or continuous feed um, black and white, you probably would go to one vendor. Nowadays, we encourage customers to uh, choose a vendor and stick with it. And if you look at the broad portfolio of products we have today, we have all the basically all the products that, with the exception of Offset today in our product portfolio. And over a number of years, we've sold those products to those customers, and they have evolved with some of our own products, and they've evolved with other customers' pro uh, competitors' products. The most important theme that really runs uh, with all of this is the ability to stitch them all together with some type of software package and for us we call that Prisma which has a completely open architecture in our 30 or 35 year history we've never invented a data stream because we've always believed in that open architecture and you think about all the different cut sheet products and the way they select paper trays and the way they select colors and the way they color manage you, again you've got a very long list of those things you want an architecture that can support that and, and have a growth with that customer and similarly you want to be able to attach it to all of the other applications a customer has, the ordering system, the front end, the MIS system, ADF, I mean the list goes on, uh, but nevertheless we've got to be able to grow and expand with them. There are a lot of good examples out there um, today and all of us have a great deal of experience to be able to help and guide the customers through that. Um, again, if you think about books or you think about transaction, all those pieces are coming from different areas. Certainly the color and the PDLs, the page description languages, become a big part of this. The legacy applications are still out there and they still have to be translated into modern day technology and I think we do a good job of that today. Thank you so much. Dustin? Yeah, so so quite similar to, to the story the guy tells, Xerox has got a long history of, of uh, innovation on the front end of the machine. So uh, we recently, just here at the show, announced the release of, of uh, FreeFlow Core in the cloud, which is, is really the heartbeat of, of uh, our workflow solutions that drive to a, a myriad of devices. So it's not just Xerox devices that are supported. Now that's available to customers in the cloud. And that filters right down to our inkjet equipment, which uh, all of our inkjet equipment is driven by uh, a free flow print server solution, which customers are quite familiar with. Um, it's a legacy solution that has been evolved and, and now drives all of our continuous feed inkjet as well as our cut sheet solutions. Um, so it, it, the, I think to answer the question that, that you had about applications though, so what we see our customers doing that, that are uh, unique, and, and I think you, you really touched on a point, our customers teach us as much about what the technology can do as we maybe think we can teach them. And so we see some really, really unique applications applications where magazines are becoming hybrid applications with offset technology. Um, we, we actually did a live demo in our booth here. We printed a, a, a perfect bomb book both off of our color press with gold, gold ink technology as well as the pages off of our new Rialto 900. So those environments where the two technologies uh, work in the same environment, they coexist in the same environment, are driven out of one set of workflow solutions really is the norm in the industry as opposed to the exception as we look forward. 
Thanks so much. Now I'll actually stay with you, Dustin. Um, this is, um, um, like I said, I, I host a, a weekly chat on uh, Twitter called Print Chat every week, uh, Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time. And prior to the conference, I had two print chats, actually, that basically gave the uh, panel topics out to the community and asked them to, if they had any questions, to ask you gentlemen, because quite frankly, I would never be sitting here in a million years, so I use this privilege to help them, you know, ask you guys stuff. So overwhelmingly, there were two topics that came up from them the most. How do you address the color matching concerns from offset users and the speed concerns? Dustin. So the color matching is, is uh, unique in Inkjet. There's no doubt about it. It's a different technology. Um, I think if we, if we, look, if we look to the, the past, the history of, of xerography, toner-based technology, the, initially there were challenges about how, how much could it mirror offset. And you know, I think that you know, the, the main topic of this panel is, is you know, Inkjet is not offset or is, is it an offset. And this is a journey we're on. So there is a number of colors that can be matched today, corporate colors, branding colors. One thing that I can say with certainty is, is Inkjet, of all the technologies that I've had the experience with in, in 25 years in the industry, is, is far and away the most stable technology in terms of color reproduction. Once you dial it in, it's there, it stays. Job after job, week after week, month after month. As long as you don't change any variables, the biggest one being paper, uh, the, the color holds quite well. So that's what we work with our customers on, whether it's our solid ink technology or aqueous ink technology. Through the, through the evaluation process, we work with them to, to mirror or match those colors as best, as best the technology can do today. And then once it's installed, we replicate that and it's, it becomes a very stable environment. With respect to the speed, uh, I, I actually have a significant history in offset. And, and one of the things that um, I think inkjet mirrors in terms of offset is, is that uh, there, there are oftentimes high quality applications that are run in offset and they're not always run at the maximum speed. Same holds true for inkjet. So there are certainly limitations to the technology today. Uh, drying is one of the biggest limitations that, that exists in the technology today. And certainly you can optimize a machine to run at full rated speed with a tremendous amount of drying, but that's not necessary for every job. So what we see with our customers is that they're looking at using the flexibility of our, of our technology to run some jobs at very high quality, 1200 DPI by 600 DPI um, with high area coverages, but they're slowing the machine down to get that quality and get the drying that they need versus they have other applications that aren't as challenging and they'll run that at the full rated speed with a little bit letter, uh, lesser resolution. So, so I think customers really are, they, they are drawn to that flexibility to be able to match up the performance requirements of the equipment to the application sets that they have. Thank you, Guy. I was going to say that Dustin's a youngster in the industry because I've managed uh, 30 years now, but uh, it's been a long time. You know what's interesting? Uh, um, you go back 30 years, I don't know, for those of you out in the audience who remember this, but 30 years ago, there wasn't any paper for toner-based products either. And a lot of things, a lot of things have changed over the years. And certainly the evolution has taken place at multiple levels, uh, at the paper level, at the technology level, at the ink level, uh, to try and create a faster, better product. And again, just to sort of remind the audience a little bit, when you think about color, up until Inkjet, the, the approximate maximum speed of a color product that was out there was roughly 100 pages a minute. And it was pretty much stuck there. And it stuck there because the technology can't evolve to go much faster in that technology and produce a cost-effective solution. So it took some time for all of the vendors here to really uh, look at a product that was able to go at a certain speed. But our first step was to move into a higher speed than where we were at 100 pages a minute, and now we're at speeds of three or 4,000 impressions a minute, which for a lot of customers out there is a bit, uh, certainly a big step forward and allows a lot of those applications to come onto our product. Yes, we still have some ways to go. I think we all agree on that. We want to make sure first, though, that we have the quality that gets those pages sold, number one. Number two, at certainly at a cost-effective rate. Because remember, certainly in the offset industry, 
You know, those run lengths have come down. And as those run lengths have come down, there's certainly uh, um, an abundance of page volume out there on, in that industry. And there's a lot of dynamics with their customers wanting a lot more than they could probably do with their offset product. And that's what we're trying to offer them. Uh, again, we're going to try and reach that point. Again, over the years, if you think about all of these offset customers, they have a wide variety of inks. And it's very common, even in a, a customer environment, I was talking to offset printer this morning, who regularly changes their ink set to manage to their customer application set. So our challenge now is to make products that can expand that gamut. And if you look across our product line today, we certainly enable uh, up to six colors on each side of the page to be able to reach that gamut more and more. But again, as I remind everybody as we talk about Inkjet, while it's definitely increasing in quality, paper is always the first color. It really determines that color gamut and really allows that color gamut to expand. And our, our goal is to become paper agnostic, increase that color gamut as much as possible. But there are really, truly are a myriad of color inks out there in the field on our offset, on customers offset presses and they've been made up over years and years and years so we've got a little bit of catching up to do. It took them probably 50 years to get where they are today so we've got a little ways to go but we're trying our best to get there as quickly as possible and produce a great page at a cost effective uh, price. Thanks very much David and I just want to um, tell you that most of the people that have the speed concerns were label printers. Oh, mm. Now you tell us. Now you tell us. I just remember. We'll let Dave. We'll let Dave answer that question. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. So a couple of things. First of all, it is all about the application, and every client, every brand, every publisher, every agency has its set of ex expectations in terms of color matching, speed, versatility, media trade-offs, and what our customers have been able to do is have had dialogues with their brands, publishers, agencies, and clients and said, this is what we can do today and this is where we think we can make some adjustments for you in color gamut or in addressability based on the color profile that we can create for a particular media. And it, Inkjet is still in its nascency, it's, it's, it's in a nascent phase, right? It's 30 years old in technology, but there's been more advances in inkjet in the last five years than in the last 30 years. And so what we're seeing is a greater acceleration of development in addressability within the gamut, and we're seeing the gamut in improve, no doubt, but for the most part, we're still talking about CMYK, and we know about the gamut that is limited there. We don't have a form fill uh, capability that you have with toner or with offset ink. So there is there there is that consideration of how inks work together with the media. Now what we have done here at Graph Expo is we've introduced our new technology called high definition nozzle architecture that doesn't really improve or widen the gamut but it improves the addressability within the gamut to enable fewer tonal breaks in photographs and in you know solids and that have uh, grayscale but we still aren't producing coca-cola red or home depot orange and we have that dialogue with our clients to say is this the right technology for this application based on what your end user expects and those conversations happen with our customers and it happens with our customers clients every day but we're seeing a lot more trade-offs happen at the client level to enable or to modify perhaps some PMS color requirements in order to capture the the uh, the capability of Inkjet. Can I just uh, ask you a question? Now, a lot of these brands have had to adjust CMYK values to go print digital. Are those transferable to Inkjet if they already know, okay, I need this much cyan, this much magenta to make my logo, or is it totally different? It's totally different. If, if, they're, if they're using a toner technology or an, an, a liquid electrophotographic technologies such as HP Indigo. So it is going to have to be customized to the uh, the thermal inkjet head and the, and the ink formulation that we use in pigment as to whether they're using pigment or dye and what kind of media. So it is, uh, you know, some Thanks. modification. And I know we have some uh, questions and comments from home. 
Good job, everybody. Um, so interestingly enough, our home audience uh, is a little different today than it has been the last few days. We have more sales managers watching today, and um, in the past, sometimes they don't um, participate uh, on Twitter or so forth. They just send me messages. They so should be out means, selling. Well, I think if they're sending me messages, they're like, you know, ask this, but we don't want our competitors to know. We're curious about inkjet, so this is this is good stuff. So first question is um, about, you know, we, we're using these words like uh, um, versatility and so forth. Are we talking about a modular approach? Are we switching out ink heads and paper feeding options and so forth to create a custom product? Or what do we mean when we talk about creating the right machine for the right application? So, so I, that's a very good question. So ver versatility can mean a bunch of different things. Um, versatility, f I, I, for instance, with our solid ink platform, the versatility there is, is that it can run on a broad range of papers. And, and because it doesn't introduce water and an absorption into the paper, um, it's very versatile across a broad range of papers. And you get very consistent color output across those papers. So that's one area of versatility. Um, on our Aqueous platform, we have versatility built in that it can run at different speed and resolution combinations to be able to address uh, you know the, the different requirements for a particular customer or application so, um, so for some customers we can run at full rated speed um, at 360 by 600 DPI and that output is perfectly acceptable for a transactional statement it's you know pretty much the standard in the industry for that so it's versatile in that regard but also those customers and we're seeing more and more mixed use environments where those same customers that have transactional documents they also do some direct mail letter solicitation Solicitation and those requirements might might be higher in terms of quality resolution, um, the ability to match the, to, to PMS colors closer and closer. So, so with the with the flexibility that we have in our system, that we can those customers can slow the machine down, run it at a different resolution, be able to get better color fidelity, better image quality to address those range of applications. As opposed to a, a lot of legacy systems have been built that to run at one speed, one resolution to address you know the very narrow range of applications so that's that's really where our, our perspective on versatility is and then the, the last component is is that certainly field upgrade ability to these technologies is possible um, it's it's possible but it's not always practical so we as we develop our technologies a lot of the advances we make are through software releases improvements to the ink sets that are field upgradable and and in at every opportunity we we make the effort to make that possible for customers um, and and we'll see some of those as we go forward on the platforms that we have today yes versatility is always a dangerous word and how big a range do you want it to be there's no question that being able to build a product to do everything is a nirvana for all of us when we get there we'll let you know um, it's got a little ways to go before that happens the good news is as you look at customers by vertical markets, whether in transaction or direct mail, uh, packaging, uh, commercial book printing, commercial printing, and so on and so forth, they fall within a certain range of application types. And we identify different products to go in each one of those verticals to best support them. Over a period of time, what you're seeing is, again, I mentioned this word agnostic before, so start to think about that word as we broaden the range on each one of our products. And if you look at a brand new product of ours, as an example, a Veriprint i300, which will have a very, very broad appeal to both transaction, direct mail, commercial because of its versatility with paper and image quality, all of a sudden you've got more appeal, more customer appeal, and therefore they're more interested in buying that product. And again, we make every effort as we innovate these products and we add more features to them to make them field upgradable. You know, at some point, you could wait until you've got all the features and then launch the product, or do you launch the product as is and then keep adding to it? And that also becomes something which we like to do because customers also can shape our product directions. If you waited so long and developed everything that went into that product, all of a sudden that environment could go away and the product mix could change. So we want to adapt as well that product as the customers need to adapt as well. Um, we do make every effort on every one of our product lines to upgrade in the field. Sometimes that's just not possible. Um, certainly, I was talking again. I was talking to another offset customer this morning. Who was saying, well, perhaps you should have a product line for the offset world, another product for the digital world, and perhaps we could explain our product line that way 
because now we have a range of products can print and offset stocks. Um, but but nevertheless, you know, there are some significant differences as an example between the packaging industry and our direct mailers or our transactional book printers, and therefore the products are more specific for them. Again, and maybe in the future we can get some additional versatility in those products and they become more agnostic in the future. Versatility related to the solution is centered on configurability and upgradability. So we mentioned earlier about needing to grow and expand and progress in your configuration if you want to move from books to marketing collateral and, and general commercial print. We're able to work with our SmartStream solution partners to help configure the system so that you can add new applications. As importantly, if not more importantly, is the scalability through upgradability. As your needs grow, as your volume grows, you want to have the ability to keep that same solution in your production center and know that you can upgrade it. So some of you have heard us talk about our first customer that we uh, sold in 2009, bought a T300, later upgraded it to a T300. T350, later upgraded that to a T360, and now they're talking about high definition nozzle architecture. And that product has been on that shop floor for more than six years, and they aren't even considering removing it from the production floor. So for us, upgradability is more than possible and more than practical, it's a reality. Now, on versatility of media, it's about being able to print any kind of media that you need without restrictions and without uh, having to say no. So with our new HP priming solutions, we, we remove a lot of those barriers to enable customers to print on standard offset coded media, standard offset uncoded media, as well as inkjet traded stocks. But we're able to show considerable savings there so that they can create more applications. Thank you guys so much. Um, of course, there's a myriad of questions that everybody has for you, but we are out of time. I would encourage everybody to get in touch with these gentlemen, with these companies, and uh, learn more about this technology. It's not going anywhere. Um, I've certainly drank the Kool-Aid on it, uh, so you've all done a wonderful job convincing me that everybody should have one of these presses. They're really cool, and you can do really cool things with them. So. HP is in booth 1202, correct? Yes. And HP Graphic Arts is the Twitter and HP.com, go inkjet web press, still your website? Yes. Yes. Canon USA, um, sorry, Canon Solutions America is in the big Canon booth over at 1213. 12, 12, it's 13. on the... It's on the card right in front of you. And your Twitter name is at Canon Solutions. And Xerox, of course, is in booth 613 uh, at Xerox Production, Xerox.com backslash Inkjet. Oh, nice one. Okay, thank you guys so much. Really appreciate it. Thanks for everybody here. We've got a big crowd. We have the Girls Who Print Lunch coming up in 15 minutes. Everybody's welcome to stay. And again, thank you so much. Great job. Good. Good job. Good job.